Good evening and welcome to VI Voices. As you can see, I am not Emil Henderson. I'm Clint. <laughs> I'm Clint D.W. Ferris. And joining me this evening is Miss Yoki Handel. Handley. Um, in the attorney Henderson as well as Boyd McFarlane they have the time off and we'll probably see them in the next couple of weeks now October is domestic violence awareness month it's also breast, breast cancer awareness month as well so it's all about purple and it's all about the pink and this evening we have um, Micheline Gums who's a crisis counselor from the Women's Coalition of St. Croix who joined us this evening and she will be discussing all issues surrounding domestic violence and we're gonna get in depth on that particular topic but before we do so we're gonna talk up we're gonna take some time to talk about hot topics and what's taking place in the virgin island um miss Anley, do you have anything to offer this evening well you know we had we went through um tropical storm gonzalo that quickly turned into a hurricane yes a you know, one so, hurricane. yeah so we're all very grateful that we didn't get touched by gonzalo mm -hmm. you know so you know thankful for that but you know it's always a blessing when a hurricane does occur i think i look forward to the um to the stormy weather because in terms of it's not about the weather it's per se but most of the rain right. that accompanies the storm that will mm -hmm. fill my system nourish the plant and a lot of things do take place a lot of change and a lot of positive change mm -hmm. but we are very much thankful that we were spared a direct hit from gonzalo yes and we are moving forward yes. because but you know what i am really thankful for and that's not thankful but i'm i'm eager for november 5th to arrive. Oh. very eager because i think this has been a very taxing and very exhausting um election, election season, season yeah. and and I, I think and i think things are becoming rather testy and i'm not the, and i think with each gubernatorial election it gets worse mm -hmm. you know especially since we have the, excuse me the old regime that's going to be coming out and we're not quite sure yet who is going to be coming in mm -hmm. you know so everybody wants to make sure that they can either still hold on to the um, sweet pot that they custom to hold on to now you know or create something new for themselves and it's 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 really getting sickening now because it's really you're playing people are playing on the emotions of people and you know there's a saying um, hungry dog eat raw meat mm -hmm. And if the people of the territory, in particular St. Croix, really doesn't take the time to study each candidate and see who's the best, and in the end just take emotion out of it, because that's the only way you're gonna have you're gonna be able to vote is to take the emotion out of it. But can the can the electorate do so? Because I am seeing that this is a elect this is a issue based election. It should be an election uh, issue based election because. It's all about moving our Virgin Islands forward. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not seeing that we are inviting issues or we are not even discussing the issues because I'm hearing words like people are flung around, you're being negative, you're attacking. <laughs> and to me, it's really taken away from us getting in, de in, in depth with the candidates to know truly what is your plan? How are you going to move these Virgin Islands from potential to prosperity? How do we move from just hovering here to where we're gonna build, uh, build, and uh, build short term and long term? Right. And to me, that's what the, the the issues are. Now, one of them I find is that I'm not hearing much candidates speak towards long term senior care, and I'm seeing that's a very that's a very prevalent issue within the Virgin Islands because I'm hearing more and more friends, mm -hmm. not my clients, but friends talk about. What am I going to do with my father? What am I going to do with my mother? And they're also taking away valuable time from work because now they don't have the, the resource, proper care, the, the proper care uh, uh, support right. within our community to do. And I think those are big issues. Because you're seeing senior centers, senior centers are closing left and right. I know I'm saying, we used to have at least three. Um, I or at least two. I know I've they had one in two. East and West. And now I think they have one just supposed to be Mid Island. And I think. Even the hours for that one has been severely curtailed. That's, that's estate rich now. That, okay. But see, my thing is, I've not seen any planning. I've not even seen any major planning by our community as a whole to come up with a, a good cadre of services right. for our senior population and mm -hmm. for those persons that who are growing old. Because we have some persons between 50 and 60 that are just out there in no man's land. They, some of them are not, some of them are 
unemployed and they need services. Mm -hmm. So those are the challenges we are facing. So long term care for our seniors, that's another one that's one. Jobs that, that that's one issue. Well jobs is always an issue, but I mean healthcare overall because I think we're notice at least I'm noticing that there seems to be an increase of um, mentally ill people or mentally mm -hmm. disturbed people on our streets. Correct. You know? And a lot of people assume that when this administration got in that that would be one of their top um, top things on their agenda to address would be the mentally ill, you know, or at least to take care or find a way to, to beef up that that portion of our society because everybody is affected by it in some fashion or form. But if you think about it, those persons that are most vulnerable in our population, those are the persons that got neglected. If you think about it is look at our healthcare system, look at our senior care, mm -hmm. look at our our commitment for people who have special needs. And because we still have a community that ha doesn't have the infrastructure to deal with a person who is regular in a wheelchair and uh, has a walk with a cane. We have sidewalks that are up and down. We have buildings, government offices and that's where that you only have, have stairs and no elevators. Exactly. Those are things that we continue to face. And we have not made a commitment to take care of the most vulnerable. And those are the issues that should be a part of this election cycle. And you're not hearing it. And we're not hearing it. And I'm talking long and I'm, I'm long term planning. Yes, we need jobs now. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to sustain ourselves four years beyond. Four, eight, twenty five. Those are the things that I am thinking about when I get older. Mm -hmm. When I'm at fifty five, sixty, can I say I am gonna live in this community? Are my dearest dollars that I'm gonna amass in the retirement system? Am I gonna be? Am I gonna be able to say I'm gonna live here comfortably, or am I have to make a choice? Do I move to Florida? Well, right now, New GRS York. is like Social Security. So the question to ask is, will there even be a GRS by the time you're ready and to see, retire? And all that is a part of the long-term planning for our Virgin Island. Immediate, as I said. Let's let's pay attention. Let's let's deal with the wound right now. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna deal with the wound, stop the bleeding, and then we're gonna treat the patient. So we're gonna give you urgent and acute care right now to deal, and that's what we need. Let's pay attention to the patient, and then we're gonna cure it. We're gonna treat the disease over a period of time, and that's what I want to see in terms of all our elected officials. Well, give know, me a sound plan, and don't just give me lip service. Right. How do you plan to do it? Show me. Think that how do you step one, step two, step three you, is you, this achievable? As you were talking about curing a disease, it reminds me of something you don't want to cure the disease, you need to look at the root cause because this was something that um, we had to do at Hovens if there was any kind of, of issue that came up. Mm -hmm. You know, you looked at the root cause, what is it at its, at its fundamental base that caused the error or the problem, and now what are the steps that, the steps that you're going to take? to eradicate it or to change it so that you don't have that mm -hmm. error happen again Correct. and that's what and if you really take the time to listen to the candidates a lot of them are not doing that root cause analysis to see well this is at its fundamental base this is what is causing this they're mm -hmm. doing what you're saying they're treating the disease and you don't want to treat this, the disease you have to see what is the underlying cause for the disease what is causing that disease and what can you do now to change it so that you're not being constantly affected by that disease. So it's change behavior, do some lifestyle improvement. Those are things that you're talking about here. Right. Correct. And and as you can see, we're also gonna go into domestic violence because mm. too, it's 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 a, it's it's a disease. It's something tantamount to a disease, and it's rather prevalent within our community. Mm -hmm. And how do we combat domestic violence? Right. How do we get to the root cause of it and eliminate it? Because if you have a batter in your family, it's going to also breed batterers within that whole family. So it's like a, a, a cycle. A cycle. And we right. want to break that cycle. So we're going to, when we come back from break, we're going to have Miss Shilene Gums from a crisis counselor from the Women's Coalition of St. Croix to tell us, uh, inform us about domestic violence and domestic violence awareness. Back in a moment.
Good evening and welcome back. Again, as I said before, we have Ms. Shilene Gomes from the Women's Coalition, who is going to tell, who is going to inform us about domestic violence and bring us up to speed and some of the things that are taking place in our community and how do we prevent it, combat it, and and, and be a violent-free community. Ms. Gomes, welcome to VI Voices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, domestic Violence Awareness Month is October, and purple is the color. I know there's a lot of pink that's going around, <laughs> but um, purple is the color for this month also. Domestic Violence Awareness just brings us closer to understanding what happens and when domestic violence takes place in the family, mm -hmm. how it affects the community, mm -hmm. um, things that we can be aware of, realizing that it's not just the person that's battered, that's affected, but also the children the extended family, the community on a whole that's extend, um, that is affected by it. Um, we have our Take Back the Night March on St. Croix this year, which is October 23rd, and we're honoring Iola Martin, who was uh, killed on her job, actually, which is something that we don't really look at, how it affects the community and it affects your workplace as well. Um, the, her abuser, who has been sentenced, went to her job, and um, hit her with a beat her with a fire extinguisher. Wow. She did not make it, um, and so he has been sentenced. Um, and her family is left without her. Mm -hmm. Her job has been affected um, because there were people at her job that were trying to help her, and, and all the rest of it. And many times we don't see it outside the family, but that is one incident where it's obviously mm -hmm. outside the family, and it affects the community on a whole. And, and you know the funniest thing? I know that family. <laughs> I know the entire family. I think it's Ayola Martin you're talking about? Yes. yes. Okay, now I know the family. Yeah, so we'll be honoring her at the march this year on October 23rd, and it's going to be in Frederickstead. We're starting the silent march from the fish market, and we're walking down to the clock tower, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a program there. Um, we have something that we usually do every year. It's called the Shoe Project. And for anybody that's never been, the Shoe Project is where we call out the names of people who have died in St. Croix and we put a pair of shoes on the stairs for them and as the list gets longer because there's 66 names that are on the list we don't do anyone that's case hasn't been completed right so there are a lot more names that can be on the list but they're not on the list because we want to wait until that's done so the family can already have their closure we don't want to intrude on their healing right so um, we put out the shoe project and it's always been very impactful because mm -hmm. we do, you don't really think about how many people have been killed due to domestic violence mm -hmm. here. Um, domestic violence is something that's been around for a very long time. We called it all kind of other things before. Mm -hmm. There were rules on the books about it that made it okay, but the more we started realizing that it was negatively affecting the family, the more we started making people aware of the fact that this is not okay. It comes in many different forms. If just because you're not hit does not mean that it's not domestic violence. Correct. There's emotional abuse, there's verbal abuse, there's psychological abuse, there's financial abuse, there's spiritual abuse, um, and there's just the, the, the emotional abuse for us and verbal abuse has the longest lasting effects. Mm -hmm. Those are the scars that happen on the inside. There's elder abuse that takes place in between there Correct. as well. Child abuse that takes place in between there as well. Um, in many ways, because of all these types of abuses that take place, most people try to avoid it. The biggest problem that we have in domestic violence is that it's an avoidance topic. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like what you all were talking about earlier mm -hmm. about the election. The things <laughs> that you don't want to touch, you kind of leave to the side. Right. That's pretty much what happens with domestic violence. Ms. Gong, before you continue, but you're right. These seems to be taboo topics. Yes. But how do we get institutions like churches schools to really start to make this a major part of the discussion because we do need to really affect change where it really matters churches schools we we do outreach um we have a faith-based committee that works out of dbsac which mm. is the state coalition mm. domestic violence and sexual assault council they are pretty much over the territories the um, coalitions so they're over a family resource center mm -hmm. and they're they work with us and the, you know and they kind of take care of the big things and so there's a faith-based committee that works from there where we're reaching out to the churches mm -hmm. we also have outreach workers that work out of DBSA and also out of the coalition where we go into schools mm -hmm. and we explain to them this is what healthy relationships are and we do it from kindergarten we do the good touch bad touch as a matter of fact in one of our outreach 
pro um, programs that we did to one of the schools is where we found out about sexual assault that was happening in the school. Mm. And so we know that it's necessary to have outreach for prevention mm. and to give the information. Um, if they call, we've gone to the housing communities. We try to reach out to as many people as we can, even to private businesses, because it does affect people. And sometimes they don't know quite what to call it. Let me ask you a question. How do you see the laws on the book? If, they, if you feel that they adequately address domestic violence in any, you know, I mean, do you feel that we need to have them stronger? Because, I mean, you know, especially when it comes for um, domestic violence against males, because people think that that doesn't happen. Oh, it happens. You know? And so if a man reports that his, um, his ex-girlfriend is stalking him or harassing him, you know, he may go to the police station and, and the police officer going to be like, yeah, right. Use a man, you can't take care of it. I mean, that's the response that they get, yes. you know. So what, in terms of laws, do you feel that the laws are strong or do they need to be stronger? Are there any, you know, legislations that... Well, there are legislations, but I'll tell you a very surprising factor. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence is not a crime. Wow. Unless it's attached to something else. Yes. Bad. Yes, it's bad. Huh. So you can't get charged with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You can get charged with domestic violence and sexual assault and, uh, and assault and battery. Oh. So if you get hit, mm -hmm. that's the charge. Domestic violence is an addition. But it's in and itself, it's not a crime. So that needs to change. We need to work on that. But the difficulty with that is that domestic violence is a behavior. It's all about power and control. So it's hard to frame it. And I think that's the problem that the legislatures have been having. And even though we've been looking into getting the laws in, so we have we have stalking laws. We need we cyber. have stalking laws. We do have stalking laws. Office. It has to be an established pattern. Well, because of technology, it's kind of difficult to establish a pattern. Because if I say with the new technology that they have out, because cyber crimes right now is a very big problem yeah. in domestic violence. If I have Mr. Ferris's phone number and your number is in Mr. Ferris's phone, I can call your number and Mr. Ferris' picture shows up on your phone. So now it looks like Mr. Ferris is calling you and because you're getting harassed, it doesn't come to the person you Who's have no way of proving it. Right. And the thing about the law is that there needs, it needs to be evidence-based. So it's difficult to get it evidence-based. And with Snapchat, with Snapchat pictures, once you open it, it's gone. So I can send you a picture of a gun 15 times a day. There's no proof because it disappears into cyberspace. And people are using these things. I mean, and they're using them here. It's not just stateside. They're using them here. It happens a lot in non-consensual pornography. Whereas you were in a relationship with somebody before, and you know, you all took pictures of each other while you were having right. adult consensual fun. Right. fun. Right. And then all of a sudden, I send it out to everybody. And it shows up and then it disappears. So I have no proof. But then 35 people can tell me I have a mole in certain place. You know what I mean? And so because these things are now becoming more in the forefront, the laws are going to have to pick up to be able to address these things. But it's difficult because it's hard to have evidence base to be able to charge any of these things, whether it be male or female, because at the coalition we see both men and women and children as well. They're affected immensely, mm -hmm. but money right. is a big problem because social services on a whole has been cut when it comes to funding. Yeah. But before we even go to the social because I would like to address the funding and all of that stuff. Sitting here, I recall a few years back, um, Women's Coalition tried to, um, um, I think they went before the le um, legislature testified on a, was it a domestic violence bill about um, spousal abuse? Uh, and I think to make it a felony yes, thing. Yes, marriage, marital rape. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a certain senator who also was against that particular bill and made and, and said some thing, some items in jest. Now, how do you combat domestic violence and those other crimes that are connected to domestic violence when even the lawmakers are not taking domestic violence seriously? Well, see, and that is one of our biggest problems because it's an avoidance. To, Domestic violence is an avoidance topic. Mm. It means that there is a bad person involved, a person with bad behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, more than a mad person, a person with bad behavior, someone who's intentionally trying to hurt somebody else. Mm. We don't want to address that. And so, luckily for us, the majority of the other senators agreed with us that, yes, this is what happens. Mm. And so, it passed. But, like you said, when you have people who are that vocal, that are making it seem like 
it doesn't exist, it doesn't happen. And I'm not sure if they even thought of how many people had been through it, mm -hmm. that their statement just totally re-victimized the person. Correct. Because a lot of times people will say things, oh, my, my worst statement ever is to hear people, why doesn't she just leave? Why doesn't he exactly. just leave? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. And I, I could never understand. If you're in a relationship where there's no domestic violence and you all don't get along, is it easy to leave? Even in healthy relationships, it's not easy to leave. Exactly. Even if you have good communication, mm -hmm. much less in a relationship where somebody has for years and years drilled into you that you'll never amount to anything. Nobody's ever going to want you. You can't handle any money. You're so stupid. You're so dumb. And they're telling you this over and over and over again. And they're reinforcing it by hitting you, by raping you, the conditioning by you raci it. raping right. your children, by turning your children against you, mm -hmm. by taking control of all the money. If you, getting out of a healthy relationship is hard, how do you get out of an unhealthy relationship? And have you thought about what happens after that? Mm -hmm. When they leave, which is the most dangerous time because the person has now lost all the power and control, or they feel that fear, mm -hmm. because batterers are very insecure. It's not that they're powerful people, they're insecure people. And they need to exert their power on someone else. Mm -hmm. And so because they have to do that, when you try to leave and you're in a domestic violence relationship, they get more violent because violence is what got you to give in. That's where the coercion came in. I isolate you from your family. I force you to do things that you don't want to do. I brainwash you, in effect, to make you do the things that I want you to do. Continue to do the cycle, which includes the honeymoon phase, whereas I will hit you today, tell you I'm sorry, buy you a diamond ring. Keep doing this. I want to get out, but I don't know how you control the money. You're the charismatic person, and that's the other thing with domestic violence that makes it difficult to combat. Mm -hmm. The batterers are the most charismatic people on the planet. Everybody likes them. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that when you try to say, well, this person is doing this and this and they're saying this and this, nobody believes you. And silence, because you're ashamed of this and why did this happen to me? Because you go through as a victim, you go through your own emotional turmoil. How did I get into this situation? A lot of times we have very successful people, whether men or women, that are in domestic violence situations. And they find it hard to get out mm -hmm. because they're like, I can't tell anybody that I let them use up all my money. Mm -hmm. Because they're so stupid, they're going to get all kind of names. And it makes it difficult because some people may not realize that and we're going to look at it from like a woman's point of view in this case, you know, that outwardly you may seem to be the most together, sophisticated, even as you say here, you know, you're, you're back strong, you can handle anything. But then when you go into the relationship now and you're, you're, you're suffering at the hands of the abuser and so forth, that even adds more to the non-believability factor of it, you know, because they're like, well, you, you're such a... You know, outspoken person and so on. I can't believe you would allow anybody to do this to you or whatnot, you know? So it, it's like, you know, walk a mile in that person's shoe, you know? And it, it, as you were talking about, you know, the, the believability part of it, you know, it, it, or the you know, accusational part of it, it brings to mind with the whole incident with um, Ray Rice and what he did his wife in the thing. Because when the first incident came out, you only saw like the last 30 seconds. Like, and I mean, it, it's sad to say, but we look at it and say, he really do have that bad. Which is sad, because he did do a bad, before you saw the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that, that he was dragging her out still was bad, you know? But it took the whole piece being shown, where he spat on her before she actually went into the elevator. Where he was, you could see now she's trying to defend herself, but I mean, what can she do against this man? You know, and I mean, and then when he knocked her clean out, you know, and then to understand all the subsequent thing where she's now apologizing, for being hit and people are like oh she must love it because she's still staying in it you know and, and it, it hurts to hear something like that you know because it's you know because I, I mean I've had friends who have been abused you know and it, it's 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 a sad thing to see because I know that yes you, you sometimes want to wonder if there's something wrong with them but it's like you said it's almost like the Stockholm syndrome you know they're now so 
I don't want to say in love, but like they, they just can't see their way out of it, no it's matter what. Fear. Right. But you know, if, even though they may not be exhibiting that type of fear, you know, they're still showing the love. Like, well, what am I going to do? But, you know, because they've been so broken. But and, and the thing about it, yes, we do have broken people in our community. But how do we fix? Besides the broken people, we have a, a broken system. Because I have seen many a case, or many of a person have been arrested in the paper, but to this day, I've not Can seen an outcome. I've not seen any follow through in terms of what has taken place. And, 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 and then I look around, and the accused batterer is out back out in the streets. And a very small amount of bail. Yeah, involved in you know, society. So how do we make sure our community doesn't diminish this act and maybe start to say wait it is not cool this is not this is not our community how do we bring about that change well part of that is that we need to fix the criminal justice system <laughs> mm -hmm. um but like i said domestic violence is not a crime okay. you know but in okay. terms of the legislation so if i get charged for assault and battery it's a misdemeanor mm -hmm. so what That's what do we need to months. do to make to, to how would how would you define domestic violence if you say you're the senator now your senator gordon and guns and we're going sorry and we're going to now you're, you're drafting a legislation what would be your definition of domestic violence so that now we can have it as a felony well see that's based on the virgin and this is the thing about the law it's based on the other laws that are in place which is why it takes a long time to get it to where it needs to go you know what i mean for in order for us to establish it mm -hmm. as a felony we have to go through quite a number of things because domestic violence attached to murder is a felony a domestic violence attached to grand larceny is a felony mm -hmm. you understand and so because it it's it's an addition to no, that's but what saying, makes it stronger but i'm saying now you have the ability now we're just saying hypothetical you have the ability to define it as a felony how would you define it because we all know what murder is right but how I'm, I'm, I'm making the assumption that the reason why domestic violence has to be attached because I think you said earlier it, there's it's no a behavior real, pattern right so and how would you the problem okay so so then there's no real definition that you can put to say where we know murder is where one person yeah. goes and either willfully or or you know non intentionally takes the life of another that's murder so mm -hmm. how would you now go and it, define it would domestic be, it violence would be the, it would be defined the exact same way but because it's a behavior pattern and it's a consequential behavior pattern right. as well as a sequential behavior pattern mm -hmm. it's harder to define it okay. because it's not so easy to say domestic violence is one person exerting power and control over another person okay. which is exactly what it is mm -hmm. which is yeah. why we have we had a, such a problem defining the stalking law because unless you have How a pattern oh, okay. unless it's a pattern if somebody does it to you one time it's not stalking it's a coincidence. You have to prove that they've done it to you a series of times with the intent to mm -hmm. cause fear. Correct. <laughs> you understand? Okay. And so, so that's what makes it difficult because based on the other laws that we do have, we have to define it based on what the criminal system says. And now if you notice too, mm -hmm. it's the criminal justice system. Right. And I'm going to get off my soapbox in a minute. It's <laughs> not the victim because justice system. Because I was just going to say, how can you determine? Because I'm stalking you, right? Because you're there with my ex. I ain't like you, so I'm going to be stalking you. Mm -hmm. And I'm following you. The police come and arrest me. I ain't mean nothing by it. I just happen. Exactly. So just because I say that, that's not the intent of fear, even though you're, you're now terrified because you don't know what it is I have planned to do. You understand? So that's, that's really how it is. It, that, that's pretty that's much ridiculous. Well, <laughs> welcome to domestic violence. Wow. And that is what makes it difficult. And, and, and you can see that there's some level of subjection yeah. when you talk about domestic violence because mm -hmm. again it's, it's just so broad right. and, and, and you can understand why it's also attached to other crimes because it's easy to it's easier it's somewhat easy to qualify what is a, an assault mm -hmm. what is battery what is rape it's also something very it's qualifiable right. at times you may leave it too broad for you to define what is domestic violence so I, I and I do, but I do applaud the efforts of the Women's Coalition, DBSAC, and other groups that are out there championing this issue and making sure they bring some awareness about what's taking place in our community. Because if we don't tr deal with these problems right. and address them at the root cause, as Yoki would say, then we're going to end up having more problems. It's going to be cyclical, and each time our resources are going to be spent on all of these things that we should have been clearing up right. at at the root at, at the root. Right. So. Before you go, to, let us know, because we're at the end of our time, 
let us know what are some of the other events that are going to be taking because you mentioned october 23rd october 23rd we um on the 18th which is saturday we have our supermarket drive which where we go we're at kmart east and plaza east and what we're doing is trying to get donations for people who do have to start over mm -hmm. so that they have some stuff to be able to start over because the funding for an emergency food and shelter it doesn't happen anymore it's been about three years so if you we don't have money to help with first month's rent or with the light bill or with food or anything to that effect anymore which is essential if you're going to start over so we don't have those things anymore so on the 18th we're doing the supermarket drive and then on the 23rd we're doing the march and and basically you're the, you're who the government goes to yeah, when 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 a, when a family is in crisis, am I correct? Yeah, pretty much. So and basically, you are a non-profit organization. We're a non-profit organization. And you do, do you take donations from the public as we well? We take donations from the public because we don't have any money coming in. The grants for social services have been cut. Okay. So so. so basically, if they want, if if our viewers would like to make a donation to Women's Coalition, they can go to your website. The website www.wcstx.org. Mm -hmm. Call the office seven seven three nine two seven two. And if you just need to talk to somebody, we are on call 24-7, 365 days a year. If you call the 773-9272 number, you'll be able to get an advocate or you'll get somebody from the office. Or if you email us at info at wcstx.org, you can also send an email, which happens a lot now. We have a Facebook page, which is Women's Coalition of St. Croix. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Pinterest. The social media has definitely helped a lot of ways. To get people in touch and that's it's men safer or women men or women i have male clients i have female clients and we have a child counselor God, on God, you are in support of the entire family it has to be a family okay. contrary to what most people believe it is not a matter of breaking up the family it's making the family healthier and, and in addition to what miss gum said the women's coalition you guys also do have a, a, um, a thrift shop and a high school program and a high school program and they do activities all throughout the year what is to raise funds or bring awareness? It's not just in October that Women's Coalition is active. The active 365, um, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And you can actually, if, you're, you're, if you are in crisis or your family is in crisis, seek out Women's Coalition. Our goal is to stamp out domestic violence and to, make our, and to heal our community because we need to address these things that are definitely pervasive. And there's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So if, yes, and I think the matter is save the taters. But tatas. also we have tatas, save the tatas. But the altar must save the, the person that's connected to those tatas as well. So think about it. And, and we'll, we'll take a break and we'll be back shortly. Well, good evening and welcome back. This has been a very informative evening, and and this ties into what we we opened the show with when we were talking during our during our segment. Yeah, hot topics. Hot topic segment when we talk about some of the issues that we should be paying attention to. Because and and domestic violence is one of those issues that should be a part of the election cycle mm -hmm. because we are realizing that it's an issue and it is not it's being underfunded because there's a cut to social services and it's going to domestic violence is going to continue to be an issue unless we start to pay attention it's been ignored because, because people look at it as as a, as a cultural thing you know like because as, as we were discussing um during the break you know it's like he don't love me if he hits me you know and and we're now seeing where we have um men who are being abused and mm. who are being victims of domestic violence as well and and i mean it, it gets hard because even as a woman you may be a strong woman and and you know you're being you're a victim of, of domestic of abuse how is it for the men now who are suffering at the hands of their women correct you know? no but and, and that and does that happen and that does play because power shifts ever so often mm -hmm. and power doesn't just have to be about physical strength exactly power can also be something that you do possess exactly. and if you if you're going to utilize that power to your advantage and then you're going to condition him and okay if i'm, if I'm only going to give you that uh, sex during this time that also put some power and so things 
those things we need to address in our community. Or even women who take advantage of men, of, of you know, the parents that raise their sons, right, mm. to never hit a woman. Correct. You know, and then take advantage of where the woman is always beaten up on the guy, you know, and then he, because he's, he's been taught never to hit, so he's not going to hit, so he's mm. going to stay there now and take the physical abuse because just like I said, I mean, you have women who do physically abuse. They have those who withhold, you have the men who withhold as well, you know? And just as um, Ms. Gum said, the verbal abuse is the worst because that is, it, it takes almost verbal, forever. Verbal, emotional, all of them. Because those are scars, those are, those are the psychological scars. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that's conditioning. Yes. It goes, it no longer does the physical beating. I am beating you mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, and, and socially, and I'm disconnecting you. And that, so, but it goes all to healthy relationships within our community. Mm -hmm. And we truly need to start to be a healthier community. Relationships are key. And we need to really start to foster those healthy communities, those healthy relationships that are going to build a healthy community. You know, I wonder how, how strong is the correlation between you know, childhood bullies and those who grow hey. up to be batterers. But even think about, the, go take it further, to even the batterers and serial killers. It's all about, it begins there. When you start to um, abuse animals, and uh, it all, to me, it's all to back to a simple thing called love. It's about love. And, mm -hmm. and if once you express love and show love, and you condition your child to love, that your child will definitely be a person that exudes love and be about love, instead of about being about beating down. People may say it's a cliche kind of thing, but that is truly what it is. You hug your child, you kiss your child, whether it's a father kissing a, a, his son and say, son, I love you, that goes a long, long, long way. But another you know, funny thing that was most telling, we had an, an our discussion during the break, we mentioned the NFL. Right. And the NFL is all about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Everything is pink. Mm -hmm. But for a league, the way domestic violence have been so pervasive, right. they have not embraced a culture of stamping out domestic violence. And this is not a, 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 a just the other day thing with the way, right? This has always been a very big part of that culture. And even last year, there was a young fellow who was a part of the Kansas City Chiefs mm -hmm. in the last year, the year before. He shot him. He shot his girlfriend yeah, and then shot him. Shot, shot himself. himself. Right. And right. he and he shot himself after he killed his girlfriend. He went to, to the, the, um, the locker room, right? To the locker room at the stadium, and then shot himself in front of his coaches. Right. So what does that say? It's an issue that the NFL, a very large corporation in America, needs to address, and 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 they're they're not taking a look at it. Well, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a different spin on it right now, you know, because especially since we're we're looking at domestic abuse, where we have maybe the large proportion of it is um, men against women. You know, we are in a very patriarchal society. Correct. Women's suffrage was only in the 1920s where we were allowed to vote. And we're still, women are still looked at as less than men. We don't get equal pay. We barely have equal rights in, in a lot of stuff, you know. And we're still looked at as property, you know. I mean, yeah, we, we, we may be elevated and more educated, but when you bring it down, again, we're looking at the root cause, women are not at the same level as men and and do we how do we look at that because you have those who are going to come into religion where the woman is supposed to be submissive and she's supposed to obey everything that her husband says because her husband is now master he is now lord of of of, of the manor and what he says he owns everything including the woman so that could be a reason why we're seeing especially in in, in a very male dominated patriarchal society where the issue of domestic violence can't even get up on the first rung of the ladder. Uh, this is going to take a lot of this time to discuss this, mm -hmm. but I am going to beg to differ with you because this is a ma matriarchal society. Our mm -hmm. society has been very much built on the, w the mother, the woman who has led the home and have built our society. It's definitely a masculine society, yes, because even those women train their sons up to be very masculine, to be very macho. Mm -hmm. But so, but I do think we have a lot to talk about yes. at that part. And it's a sidebar for when we could bring an anthropologist and some sociologist right. and really so hash this, and really hash it out. Right. But, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this. Mm -hmm. Clint Ferris loved women. <laughs> My mommy's a woman. I have ten sisters. So I elevate women to the status which they should be at because I do think women are very important and 
and I, that's all I don't have to offer to that. To, I, I can't, to those people who take advantage of women and other pe persons in our community, I say that is not cool, that is not right. Everybody has a voice and let them speak. Let the, everybody feel love and em be embraced by love. But Yoki, I'm gonna say it's good. It's good to share a seat with you. I share the podium with you this evening um, because you're definitely a strong woman, and I'm gonna give you credit for that because you are an entrepreneur and a small business woman, woman in this community, and you were honored just a few months ago. Am I correct? Yes. So, uh, so you know, so you see what I'm talking about? Us being a matriarchal community, you're raising your family. Um, and that, that's true. Mm -hmm. And we have other, we've seen other women like this. But domestic violence isn't just about women. It's not. It's about the whole family. Yeah. And, and it's about what, eradicating this illness mm -hmm. and strengthening the whole family. Because if you think about it, just like how in sports, gambling undermines sports, mm -hmm. domestic violence undermines the, the family. family. And you don't just undermine it for now, not for this generation. You undermine it for several generations. Right. So. That being said, we're going to say that Emil isn't here, but we, we're looking forward to that Emil and Bobby will be joining us back soon. We're still a, a part of our election cycle, and November 4th is a very crucial election time. And we do hope, not do hope, we charge you to go out and bring out the vote. Go out and vote. Don't, don't sit back and say that, oh, they're going to select a candidate. My vote doesn't count. It does count. Put let it let your voice be heard vote for the candidate of your choice and it's very important so on november, tuesday november for go out and bring out the vote we have discussed some of the issues this evening and those issues are very relevant to you and your family so please identify with the candidate our candidates that are speaking about your issues and have a plan for your to address your family and your family's success that being said, have a pleasant evening and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday.